Hello Pharma's friends. Welcome to Pharma Syndrome YouTube channel. In this video, we will discuss regarding the drugs for treatment of hypertension. So hypertension is nothing but increased blood pressure, excess blood pressure. That is, there are different reasons behind increasing hypertension, nothing but blood pressure. So here our main focus on the AC, sorry, anti-hypertensive drugs, the drugs useful for treatment of a hypertension drugs useful for treatment of a hypertension so in this regard there are number of class of drugs and we will see with examples so in that first one is ace inhibitors that is angiotensin converting enzyme inhibitor you know already ace is one of the enzyme involves in the renin angiotensin aldosterone system so in presence of ace enzyme there is an activation of angiotensin 2 to 1 and angiotensin 2. So, angiotensin 2 is a potent vasoconstrictor which may increase the blood pressure. And all ACE inhibitors are prills like enalapril, lisinopril, ramipril, captopril, benzapril, perindopril. And angiotensin 2 receptor blockers all are SARTA. So, in the above, by inhibiting the enzyme, they preventing the conversion of angiotensin 1 to angiotensin 2. Angiotensin 2 is a potent vasoconstrictor. There is a no production of angiotensin 2. Then, no increasing blood pressure. And next, they directly blocking the angiotensin receptor. Because by blocking ACE enzyme, there is a drawback or dry cup. Because ACE angiotensin converting enzyme involves in the metabolic degradation of the bradykinin but here due to inhibiting the ace enzyme one of the drawback is dry cough because excess bradykinin may causes irritation on the bronchial smooth muscle and may develop the dry cough that's why scientists discovered angiotensin 2 receptor blocker so here no involvement with the AC enzyme and no chance of a dry cup as a side effect. So here angiotensin 2 receptor blockers, sartans like valsartan, like olmisartan, like losartan, like telmisartan, like candisartan. So simply AC inhibitors and angiotensin 2 receptor blockers. Next calcium channel blockers. Examples like verapamil, chemically phenyl alkyl amine. Dilthiasm, nifidipine. So, nifidipine like a number of dipins are there. They are chemically called as dihydropyridine. They are chemically called as dihydropyridine. So, what is the need to block calcium channels? Calcium channels may present on the heart muscle as well as a blood vessel smooth muscle also. So, excess stimulation of calcium may increase the contraction. So, increasing contraction on the blood vessel smooth muscle increase the vasoconstriction and increasing muscle contraction of cardiac muscle both leads to development of hypertension that's why need to block calcium channel and the examples are verapamil dilthiasm plus nipidipine and direct renin inhibitor direct renin inhibitor is the aliskerin so direct renin inhibitor is aliskerin and renin release inhibitors are beta blockers so if you know renin may release from the kidney and present in the blood so the directly sorry the form of renin present in the blood can be directly inhibited by the aliskerin and beta blockers like propranolol they inhibit the release of renin why because beta blockers like propranolol blocks beta 1 receptors on heart as well as beta 1 receptors in the kidney especially juxtra glomerular cells so activation of beta 1 receptors in the kidney increases the release of renin that's why blocking of beta receptors inhibit the release of renin from the jg cells of the kidney so renin release inhibited by the beta blockers and a direct renin inhibitor the renin is already released with that renin excess present in the blood that is directly inhibited by the aliskerin. So many times on this direct renin inhibitor, they ask the questions in computative sector. 
next vaso dilator next vaso dilator so the rise in blood pressure especially increase in hypertension is because of uh, excess vaso constriction of the blood vessel that's why we have to dilate the blood vessel especially blood vessel containing a smooth muscle and there are different types of dilators like arterial dilators veno dilators both arterial as well as veno dilators example of arterial dilators like a uh, hydrolysin hydrolysin minoxidil diazoxide phenyl dopam phenyl dopam and veno dilators like a uh, nitroglycerin and both arterial as well as venal dilators like a uh, sodium nitroprusside sodium nitroprusside and uh, next category sympatholytic agents so here this following class of drugs used as anti hypertensive and affect the sympathetic nervous system activity so first one is centrally acting so these drugs act on the central nervous system and reduce the blood pressure or hypertension in the peripheral like alpha methyl dopa which is a pro drug and also chloridine both drugs are alpha 2 receptor agonist alpha 2 receptors are auto receptors the function is the auto receptor inhibit their own neurotransmitter release they called as presynaptic or auto receptors that is centrally acting and next category in the sympatholytic agencies ganglionic blockers so they block the ganglia in the ganglia of the sympathetic nerve fibers ganglia of the sympathetic nerve fibers like a trimetaphen and alpha blockers like a selective alpha 1 receptor blockers like doxorubicin terazosin adrenergic neuron blockers like reserpin as well as guanidryl inhibit the release of noradrenaline from presynaptic to the postsynaptic receptors beta blockers so regarding the beta blockers i already made a video on the classification of beta blockers and apart from this all drugs so there is a involvement of diuretics involvement of diuretics and uh, ac inhibitors or arbs as well as calcium channel blockers we already discussed with these drugs in the above classification and here when initiation so initiation of therapy in the hypertension treatment the first line agent always will be the diuretics because diuretics increase the elimination of excess fluids from the body so generally what is the reason behind the increase in blood pressure or hypertension that is activation of renin angiotensin aldosterone system when this system is activated there is increased plasma volume increased body fluid volume that increased plasma volume or fluid volume may shows pressure on the blood vessels and increase the blood pressure and especially to reduce that excess blood volume or plasma volume from the body diuretic should be used and that diuretics eliminate excess fluid from the body so this is simply regarding classification of anti hypertensive drugs nothing but drugs used for treatment of hypertension so we will connect in the next session